Welcome to this video. It's going to be a quick intro. It's kind of interesting that I'm creating this after I've created close to close to 70 videos in this channel, but I, I've been asked and I want to make sure I cover this. What is the purpose? Why did I create uh, Lame Creations? What is the purpose of this channel? And just right off, the first thing is, uh, if you haven't picked this up, uh, Lame stands for Log Analysis Made Easy. I wanted to come up with a way to help people who want to get into the security arena to understand log analysis and how to do it. And it there's a high barrier of entry. And at the places I've worked, we've been big Splunk shops. You're gonna see a lot of Splunk training on this. And what happens is individuals, uh, they, they go and take Splunk training and Buttercup Games is awesome. I don't want to diminish anything about Buttercup Games, but if you've taken Splunk training, you know what Buttercup's Games is. And it is very focused to a particular type of action. And a lot of analysts struggle to make that jump from Buttercup Games to, well, how do I do this in the security arena? And that's what I really wanted to jump to. And the best way to do that is to have your own environment. And it's a little passion project of mine. I'm gonna kind of show you my uh, general layout for my home network. And it all started with uh, getting a few boxes, some extra computers I had around, and virtualization. Virtualization has changed the world as far as being able to set up your home network and create things. Um, I have a uh, my internet provider, and they're out here. And I actually stuck my own uh, router, my own firewall, up there so that I in between my cable company and my house. And that is, I did that with PFSense. All of these things I'm gonna show you are basically outside of the hardware to run them. They are free, or at least uh, free enough to use. PFSense is uh, down, you can download it, use it. It is a very powerful firewall. I know many uh, uh, companies, school districts, et cetera, that use this as their primary source. It is definitely production grade worthy. It is, uh, it's got lots of power. I'm gonna talk about PFSense in a little bit. We, I tap my networks at my DMZ, basically my systems that are available from the internet. Um, I have my stuff that's internal, and then I have my I have virtualization labs and stuff that are uh, segmented off of my production environment. And let's talk about some of these tools that I have put in my home network. First off, I mentioned PFSense. I love PFSense, you can't beat the cost of free. It doesn't take up a lot of resources. Um, when I do some videos on this, I don't have a lot of videos on PFSense right now, but you can. there are plenty of YouTube videos out there on PFSense. I have, uh, there's these cheap um, appliances that you can get by from, uh, I think from Cisco. You can side load your PFSense into it and run them. Uh, my first three years of using PFSense, I just had as a virtual environment off of my, uh, on a, on a virtual farm. Um, you can grab a old computer tower, as long as it's got two NIC cards in it, uh, you can totally turn it into a PFSense. It's really uh, easy. Anything can be a PFSense box, really. And what does it give you? It gives you network firewalls, the ability to do port forwarding. It's got DNS. I love DNS filtering. I can pretty much remove almost all ads from websites. So as I go browsing, I don't have to uh, deal with the ads. I do that through DNS filtering and my proxy. Um, I have DHCP on my network. Um, DHCP is nothing impressive. You have Active Directory, but how many people use an AD controller at home or set that stuff up? PFSense, that takes care of it for you. It's got DHCP in there, right? Uh, nice and easy for you. It's got web proxy capabilities, so all of your stuff can go through proxies. Great uh, security tool. Uh, most companies should be using a proxy if they're not. Now you've got a proxy in your own home network. OpenVPN, this allows me to, uh, from my phone, from a computer outside my network, I can VPN into my home network and make changes, really cool product, all there in PFSense, and how can you beat the cost of free? Corelite, this is one of those interesting things. It's actually, if you're not familiar with Corelite, you might have heard of Zeek or Bro. Bro is a uh, a uh, tool that is used to read network logs, uh, network uh, packet captures, and they summarize the logs into a very con uh, condensed, powerful uh, set of logs. You can get uh, the amount of data from network logs you can get out of these uh, Zeek sensors are amazing. Uh, Corelight is the closed source uh, uh, Zeek. But what's cool is Corelight wants you to use their product. They want people to use it. And so they have uh, 
from home agreements. And so you can actually download a VM virtual machine, a little VM o OVA. They'll send it to you, sign up, and they'll let you use that at your house. And so you have a close sort of the production form of Corelight that you can use. Uh, for years, I used just a Zeek system before this uh, Corelite from home uh, option came up, but um, it's this is just so neat and easy. Zeek's nice as well, but I really love the Corelite. Corelite, in addition, gives you Suricata IDS. You've got Intel Framework, all this stuff. You can make work with Zeek. Uh, and so it's yeah, if you want to work with the open source, you can, um, but I really want to push this Corelite, uh, Corelite at home concept. It's a great free product uh, Product you sign up and they'll let you use uh, their Corelite. You can only use, you can only ingest so much data, but this is a home network. I don't even come close to reaching those kind of limits. So it's a great product. I'm going to call it free, even though it's not truly free, but for the demo purposes for home network, it's free. Uh, virtualization, and these all come as, I'm going to use, they're all free in a different way. Um, I find that VMware, it's got some really cool cap capabilities, but in a lot of it's free, it's got really nice GUI, but some of it is behind uh, a paywall. Uh, you got Microsoft Hyper-V that is completely free to use, which is weird because Microsoft's usually the one that makes you char charge you money, but Microsoft, you can download Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V servers and they are free to use. Uh, there are no limitations on them other than to access them, you gotta use PowerShell. Uh, that hopefully when you get done taking a lot of this stuff, that shouldn't scare you off. Uh, Proxmox is another product that I have some coworkers of mine using, they swear by it. It is completely open source. It's gained lots of capabilities, but all of these products you can just download, you can set them up and you can virtualize away. And you can take an old laptop, take an old computer, set it up to run multiple different systems. And from there, you can set up Windows and Linux systems, pull their host logs. You can do pen testing. You can set up like a Kali Linux box and pen test your network. You want to set up like a home, uh, an actual simulation of a uh, actual enterprise system. You can create Active Directory, the beauty of Microsoft. They'll give you a 90, 180 day license to use their product for uh, testing purposes. Cool. Then I will show you, I have videos on it on how to use PowerShell scripts to set up a domain controller. I can literally set up a domain controller with a script, I press a button, boom, I have a domain controller. Put a few more scripts together, I have workstations. I can recreate a domain with workstations that are all joined and working in 20 minutes. Uh, and all I have to do is press the script and I come back 20 minutes later and I've got a fully functioning environment. I like the fact that I've called this leveraging scripting. But anyway, the point is, if you if you know how to use scripting, I will show you how to do that. You can set up your own home environment in a virtual and have it looking like it's a production domain with OUs and everything. I like Splunk. Um, Splunk is an amazing tool. This is log analysis, and I'm sorry, I don't want to get into the uh, the arguments about which product. I'm a Splunk guy. I love Splunk. I have used other products. I always come back to Splunk. If you don't, that's okay. You, everyone gets their own choice. I hope you still get, get uh, value out of this, but this is primarily, we want to take all these network logs, all these host logs, and get them ingested and start searching them. And the easiest tool I have ever seen is Splunk. And Splunk, people say, well, it costs too much, I can't afford it. Well, you can download a free version of Splunk, and it will give you 500 megabytes a day for free. If you aren't aware, 500 megabytes is not a lot, but for a home network, it's actually a lot. Uh, and that's without doing any sort of filtering, reducing, and my next slide is going to be about that. But, and also remember, it's on a per instant basis. If you need more than 500 megabytes, have more than one Splunk instance. Have this Splunk instance dedicated to doing host logs, this instance dedicated to uh, network logs. The beauty is you don't need a whole lot of uh, horsepower to run a Splunk instance if you're only ingesting 500 megabytes a day. And so uh, what normally takes, a, you got a big uh, Splunk instance, you can have a tiny Splunk instance and it will still just put up multiple instances of Splunk. 500 megabytes a day, you'll be fine. There's lots of ways that it should not be a limitation to use at home. Um, also Splunk Phantom Soar, you can go, I, I uh, would, 
say that everyone should attempt to go get an account, go sign up, they'll let you download Phantom. And they now call it Soar. This is a amazing product to automate security tools. You can actually have a uh, Splunk alert go off, it'll go into Soar, and then Soar will go and say, hey, I'm gonna go to my firewall and let's go actually shut that firewall port off, things like that. It's got the ability, it leverages Python to and playbooks and work that in a massive community to automate a lot of security tasks. I highly recommend it. The other option you've got with Splunk, coming back to Splunk Enterprise, you can download the Enterprise Trial. It's for 30 days, you get far more than 500 megabytes a day. And the thing is, if you're doing a trial environment, who cares? In 30 days, blow it away and put a new one. I honestly can use the free, but if you need more and you want to keep it simple, just every 30 days, just hit reinstall Splunk and you'll be good to go. Um, the free version, it gives you pretty much every capability. There are some limitations. Again, if you run into those, let me know. I can show you how to get around those limitations. Uh, there are ways you can make, at your home, you can get away with the free version. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to use that. Um, Cribble. Cribble is, I, I, I hope this analogy works, but Cribble and Splunk go together like peanut butter and jelly. They are just a, a combination made for each other. Uh, ignore the lawsuits that are going on. Part of the reason is because they work so well together. It's almost, uh, uh, it does cause some tension between the two companies, but they, they're a spinoff of it. Cribble, the, the founders of Cribble, are, were former Splunk employees. They know the product very well and it works just amazing. But the concept of Cribble, the reason you want to use Cribble is it, it really improves your log ingestion. Cribble can sit in between the logs coming in and the logs going into Splunk and it can enrich the data, drop unnecessary logs. In reality, if you fully leverage Cribble, you can make Cribble actually only pull logs when you need to. I don't need the logs all the time. I only care about the logs when something isn't quite right. Now send those logs to me and Cribble can do that. You wanna talk about keeping your ingestion log uh, licensing down? Cribble is the way to do it. There are lots of fields and logs you don't need. There's a lot of logs you don't need. Put Cribble in between, Cribble will toss those logs out for you and all of a sudden you that 500 meg license goes a whole lot further. Cribble is free. Yes, you can pay for it. But again, at your home network, you are probably not going to exceed their free license. And they want you to use it. They want people using this tool. And so they've made it free to the community. Use it. Um, again, Cribble will help you enrich data. You, If you've ever had to deal with data models, I'm going to start specializing in data models because it seems you guys really enjoy that. Uh, well, to get your stuff to fit into a data model, you have to rename alias and all sorts of things. Cribble is almost like an easy button. Imagine a GUI where you could just basically see your logs. You just go click, hey, this one, rename it, rename it, rename it, rename it. What does it look like when I'm done? And it shows you that view. It is uh, it is as close to an easy button as you can get. I'm the biggest Cribble advocate, and they don't pay me a penny, but I will I, I will sing from the rooftops how amazing this product is. Um, the other thing I've recently learned is Cribble Edge. It's another product from Cribble, and it is basically a universal forwarder from Splunk on steroids. You put this thing on, it doesn't take a lot of resources. It'll work on any Linux box and Windows servers. At this moment, when I last saw it, it says it doesn't work on Windows workstations. I haven't tried. I don't know if it will or won't when they say that it doesn't work. But they're, I've heard they're working on getting it working on Windows workstations. The principle is it will actually read your entire uh, uh, hard drive and will come back and say, hey, these are potential log files. Do you want to ingest them as well? Do you want to set up a schedule for when to ingest them? Do you want to? And it's all managed from the central hub. And you you can say, hey, something weird going on. Bring me these logs in, bring me those logs in. Or you, the nice cool feature, you can actually from this all central management, you can go in, you can see how is the system look. You got a nice graphical interface um, and you can see how you're basically a command and control uh, system to see all of your remote systems that this Cribble Edge is on and you can control them. You can send out scripts and say, hey, execute this. This system isn't healthy, uh, push this out, do this. It's just an amazing, amazing product, but it basically gives you log forwarding and real-time visibility into any system you put it on. And then from a simple uh, one, 
one command and control structure, you can basically see all the systems that are running Cribble Edge. An amazing product. Um, automation, automation, automation. I can't speak this enough. We want to leverage scripting to automate tasks. I put out videos on PowerShell. I will be putting out videos on Python. I'll be putting out videos on Bash. Things you can do to automate because automation is the key to becoming more effective. If you can automate a task that used to take you minutes, hours, weeks, it is worth it. As I said, I build domain controllers with a giant script. Uh, the beauty is I have that script. When I want to run it, I just push it over to my, uh, my Windows server that I want to turn into a domain controller, run it, and press the enter button, walk away. When I come back, it's a fully configured domain controller with OUs and group policy and everything. I can set scripts up to set up Windows workstations, have them join the domain. And of course, once you're on a domain, you can use G group policy to, again, automate out all that stuff. So it takes me almost no time to build an entire domain structure uh, with PowerShell. Python, again, anybody who knows Python, it gives you so many libraries, so many abilities for automation. Uh, Bash, you got, you got, you really do want to know some Bash. Um, I, I wish I was better. I'm going to keep getting better at these things. PowerShell is my go-to tool. I like to point this out. Only reason I, I'm a biggest uh, advocate of PowerShell is people, I'm trying to help change the frame of mind. People know that Python can be used on any any uh, system, Mac, Linux, Windows, uh, but not everyone is aware that PowerShell has very much some of that very same uh, capabilities. I'm not trying to say that they are the same, whatever you can do with PowerShell, you can do with Python. No, each has its own uh, tool, but just from, uh, is good for different things, much like uh, a hammer, a wrench, a saw, they're all great tools in your tool belt. And one is not better than the other. They all have their purpose and use. And the more tools you understand how to use, the better you'll be. So anyway, I'm a real big fan of automation. And so you're gonna find videos on those different uh, scripting languages. And I hope that helps you understand. This is what this channel is for. I continue to plan on growing it. I want to turn this into something that the community can benefit from. It's really important that you guys like and subscribe if you like this. Particularly, if you see a video you like, please give me a thumbs up. The more you like it, the more people can see the channel and that it's available to others, and it'll help this channel keep growing. Um, I'm not getting paid to do this stuff. It sure, so liking and subscribing really makes it a lot easier on my part. Um, anyway, I hope this helps. I, I would constantly say, I hope this helps you move from being a uh, lame analyst to being someone who really does know how to uh, run logs and run security. And that's my goal. That's my hope. Thanks so much.